Okay. <clears throat> well, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting of the Lakota Board of Education. Um, Jenny, would you please call the roll? One minute. Uh, Mr. Lovell? Yes, here. <laughs> Mrs. O'Connor? Present. Mrs. Casper? Here. Mrs. Schaefer? Here. Mr. Parnell? Here. Thank you. We uh, had every we had every intention of doing the Pledge of Allegiance this evening, and we're hoping to be able to incorporate that into our agenda. But we had technical difficulties this evening, so we apologize for that. But we continue to try to iterate on our experience to bring our community in to have this authentic experience. But um, hopefully next time. Um, so that leads us to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved, Linda. Second, Julie. Jenny, please call roll. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. This brings us to the next session uh, section on the agenda, board president comments. Um, the only thing that I wanted to bring up with my fellow board is um, just a conversation, and we may not be able to have it right now, but just trying to plant the seed in regards to what the transition back to in-person meetings might look like um, for us as a board. Obviously, as the state continues to reopen things and um, we start to look into the future, into the summer, one of the things that we just need to be stirring and talking about is how might that look for us? Um, does, it, does it mean that we come back full with public participation? Does that look like a blended approach for a while? What is the right time? Um, things like that. We can have a discussion, a short discussion now if we wanna do that. The other option that I could do is uh, just send out a survey to the board to collect thoughts on that, um, to try to get input. And at the next meeting, um, we could have a further discussion. Uh, is there any input from the board on that? Brad, um, I like the idea of maybe doing a survey and seeing how everybody, where everybody stands, but I also feel like we have to wait and see what, at this point, it doesn't look like we could do a blended where we're in person and we're filming to the public, but I think at this point we're still with no more than 10 people. We wouldn't be able to go I full. Totally, I totally disagree with that. I think we need to go back to the in-person meetings just like they were before. Well, you can if the if the state says no more than 10 people can gather. Sure can. you can. Mm, not the state says we can't. Well, yes, you can. That, <laughs> uh, quite frankly, you, you, you can. And if you put your, your public seat six feet apart, you're fine. So um, I really don't give a shit what the governor says i think we need to take a stand and we should watch our language but um right well you know sometimes you gotta you gotta say it the way it is and this well, is and i also think it has to be an agreement we can't one person just can't take a stand and decide they want to do well that. i'm gonna take a stand so if, if you four don't want to take a stand that's fine we'll keep doing okay. it i'm taking a stand okay are there any other comments? I think doing a survey and gathering input would be helpful. I would also like to go back to regular meetings and I'm fine with doing the six feet apart with Westchester Township trustees, for example, have continued to do their meetings. They haven't gone to virtual. They have spacing for the audience. I think as long as we can uh, maintain the six foot distance for all of us, I don't have any problem with doing that. Okay. I do think um, it goes more toward transparency. So. Oh, Linda, I lost right, the back. I lost the back part of your statement. So I think there's. I think it's just more transparent when we can do a public meeting in public. So yeah, I would prefer to go back. Sure. Okay, well, what we'll do is, um, I think that we have one more meeting in May. I think what we should probably do is finish out the month in a virtual setting and to have a conversation about what that might look like as we head into June. Um, Brad, and back in Brad, excuse me, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing there's some background sound. Some feedback. I mean, yeah, too. I hear some feedback as well. 
Um, it might help if folks put themselves on mute if they're not talking. Um, is what I was going to say is we have one more meeting in May. What we could potentially do is carry out that meeting virtually just for the rest of this month and then look at what it takes to re-situate in June being in person. One of the things that we could do is um, just make sure that we are getting the health commissioners, uh, the Butler County Health Commissioners stamp of approval and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I agree that I my feeling is that um, it's better to meet in person if we can do that. And if things are opening up, I think we need to start re looking and readjusting and how our meeting's going to look. With that being said, I think it does come down to public participation. I would like to explore and see what Westchester has been doing. I know Liberty Township has been meeting virtually um, as well. And so what I'll do is I'll send a survey as well to the board just to capture everybody's opinion, including management. Um, and then at the next meeting, I'll be adding to the agenda a further discussion. Does that sound good? Yep. My preference would be to go back to, especially since it's our five-year forecast meeting, to go back at the end of this month. Okay. Obviously, I'm just one board member, but that would be my preference. Okay. I think that All right. it's an important discussion to have. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. All right. We will move on to superintendent comments. Um, thank you. Just a couple comments about graduation. We made that statement. We put a statement out about uh, 10 days ago. Got some feedback, constructive feedback about graduation. And our plans were set at the information we had that, that, at that time. Obviously, it's changed since then. Um, Mr. Vogelman helped a lot with looking at some space issues. We have it both east and west, and what, what are we able to do? Um, obviously, Mr. Card, Mrs. Davis helped. Uh, we talked to Jenny Baylor, who's the health commissioner, several times about what we can do, and we can make it better than what we announced about 10 days ago. So we're looking at now an announcement going out tomorrow uh, that we'll do that drive-in movie style. Um, obviously, there won't be a screen, but the the screen itself would be the front doors of East and West. And so we're able to do that, able to accommodate our families and our students will actually be able to walk across and pick up their diploma. Um, we'll have two cars uh, per family. There'll be some staggering. Um, we have to do it because of spacing issues by our health commissioner and by the state. We'll have to do four sessions for East and three sessions for West just because of the size of the parking lots. Uh, Easts will be May 30th. Graduations will be at 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and 6 p.m., and West on a Sunday, May 31st, because it is a Sunday. Their first would be at noon, 3 p.m. for uh, the second one, and 6 p.m. for the last one. Uh, we had a lot of students and feedback about this issue. We even had um, some conversations today about um, this new idea, new and improved plan. So I'm um, proud that we were able to make it better than what we initially thought. Um, we are still also going to be filming a virtual graduation in case something changes and we have that, but we'll be able to put that out as well. Um, also for the people that, um, the two cars for each graduate at East and West, we're also gonna have it simulcast on a radio station so they can hear it and it'll also be a PA too. So. We're incorporating some sounds and uh, just appreciate people's feedback in a way that we can honor our seniors and make it even better than what, what we had initially planned. So just wanted to mention that to the board. Any questions on that? Matt, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming the, uh, the board will be present at all those graduations. You're requesting yep. us to be at those graduations in person? Right, and you'll be socially distanced apart, but yes, and we'll make sure that we're, um, you're, you're far enough away that that won't happen, that that won't be an issue. Okay. So Matt, well, well I'm just, oh, I'm sorry, Brad, go ahead. Nope. No, you have the floor. I was just, oh, sure, when they, so the kid will get out of the, the student will get out of the car and walk to the, to the front door for their diploma. Will the parents also, or the parents just no, stay just, in the car? Their parents will still stay in the car. We'll have um, professional photographers there 
Um, and the okay. reason for that is obviously social distancing, but we did want to accommodate as many parents as we could at the ceremony itself. Right. But just like a regular graduation where the student would be going across the stage, getting their diploma, and then going back to their vehicle. Right. Okay. Are we allowing parents a way to take a picture? I know we'll have the professional okay. photographer, but... Uh, if we can accommodate them to do that, I think we we can but right now it's just a student going up to do that and that was at the health commissioner's request okay so i'd say probably not right now if that makes sense and i appreciate you making the effort and taking the time to do something uh differently with the feedback that we got from the community so thank you for that anytime we can make something better uh we will the only uh mistake we would have made is if we just kept it the way it was without making these accommodations since we were able to and I do appreciate Jenny Baylor um, for working with us. We called her several times, uh, Betsy and I did, to make sure that we were within the, the right guidelines. So um, obviously we'd want to have a, a traditional graduation like we've had in the past, but we're making the, the best choice now that we can. And so she signed off on this so we can tell the parents this is it? Yeah, communication's going to go out tomorrow, yep. Great, thank you, Matt. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you to the team. Appreciate you guys taking the feedback from the community. And um, I know that the principals are probably uh, at capacity thinking about graduation, but we appreciate the extra effort they put into it. And Mr. Vogelman was great with it too. And uh, awesome. Mrs. Fuller, Mrs. Betcher as well, in addition to the high school principal. Great. I do have a question right. for Treasures. Matt. Oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. I guess I can wave my hand at you or something. <laughs> but, um, Matt, I had one more question. I had brought to your attention a lot of questions I'd received from students regarding what our grading policy will be. Have we put that information out, especially to our high school students, about how we'll be handling that? Yeah, so we made a floor for the fourth, for the fourth quarter of 65%. So our students um, will take the better of the third quarter floor versus the fourth quarter floor um, so that they're not going to be harmed in terms of what their overall grade is going to be. I don't know if that, that captured your question or not. Have we released that information to the students because I'm still yeah, getting if, questions. If we haven't, we will. Perhaps this week? Sure. Perhaps That'd tomorrow. Okay, any other questions for Matt? Comments? All right, Treasurer's comments? I'm going to um, have my comments later on during the meeting, so you can find me on this one. Great. Well, that brings us to our first opportunity for public comment. Just a reminder, this public comment um, section is for items that are on the agenda. Um, folks will have three minutes to address the board. We have two options tonight. One was to submit in writing by 4 p.m. today public comment. Um, the other is that if there's anybody on that would like to raise their hand, literally raise their hand, uh, we will call on you and you will be piped through to address the board. Do we have any public comment? Nope. Okay, well hearing none or seeing none, we'll move on uh, to board reports. First up is board policy committee. Um, is Mr. Vogelman going to give an update on the first reads? I believe that he is. Okay. Or can. I see him. He's there we go. Mr. Vogelman, you are unmuted. Would you like right. to? Is that, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. You can, yes. Okay, great. I will, uh, I'll get through this pretty quick. Um, the majority of policies you see before you for first read tonight are based off of our March 6th update we have with our Neola representative. Um, and just kind of a quick overview of those, where those come from. 
majority of those are coming from House bills and Senate bills that have recently been passed. So with your uh, numbers 1520, 3120, 312005, 312008, and 412008, that all deals with limiting treasurer liability, uh, confirmation of the employee's licensure. This is the one where if we hire somebody and start to pay them and they do their job without being uh, fully licensed, then uh, our treasurer is responsible to pay back to the state uh, that person's salary. So we are making sure that that is up to date. Uh, policy 2464 deals with the change in Ohio to revised code uh, that adds emphasis to requirements to offer an opt-out service for students. So that's in addition to 2464. 3120 and 4120 dealing with employment of uh, professional and certified staff. This is a change in language in which we are removing the old fashioned term of highly qualified. Uh, so that's no longer a statute. So that is being removed from our policy language. Policy 312004 deals with employment of substitutes. That just deals with new ODE licensure protocols for substitute teaching licenses. We'll work through uh, our consortium on that to make sure we are following that. Uh, 4119 is actually a rescinded policy. This policy was added back in 2012 in a time in which our contract language did not uh, match with our policy. And this was when we were going through reductions and making sure we were not giving out uh, continuing contracts. Uh, but now that that is included in our policy 4120, it's kind of repetitive. Our 4120 says we'll follow what's in our collective bargaining agreement, which has to align with the Ohio Revised Code. So basically the policy 4119 is no longer needed. And that was caught by our NEOLA representative when he pointed out to us that really it's a repetitive policy. So that's why 4119 is being rescinded. 4124 employment contract uh, that just deals with an update from Senate Bill 216. Uh, policy 4162. Uh, with uh, CDL license holders, this is updated federal regulations as it comes from the Department of Transportation. Uh, 4422, uh, this is one that we revised. It's a one, one that we caught in our benefits for non-represented staff where our recruital, accrual of vacation days was not in alignment with our other uh, support staff language. And so we just need to update that language. And that was discussed with our team on the May 1st policy update. Uh, then on 5460, this deals with graduation requirements as part of House Bill 166 for the new requirements dealing with the class of 2023. This is where we start talking about the use of diploma seals. So we're in the process of instituting that policy and seeing and working through curriculum to see what that actually looks like for the class of 2023 and beyond. Along with that, the 5460.02, this is a brand new policy which also ties into House Bill 166, uh, dealing with uh, students that are at risk of not qualifying for graduate for a high school diploma. So that will keep us up to date with that. And then finally, policy 6107 is a revision that deals with uh, the use of electronic signatures and electronic records that are part of school business function. Uh, that policy is clearly a, a sign of the times. Uh, that we just are making uh, more things accessible through el electronic signatures at this time. So those are the policies you have in front of you for first read tonight. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vogelman. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll move on to community engagement committee. Uh, Julie, really the only thing we Oh, oh yeah, went muted. Muted. Am I unmuted? Yes. You are. I did not mute myself. Um, the only thing is we had a, Matt had a coffee chat last week. The most well attended coffee chat Matt has ever had. I believe there were 300 people on the coffee yeah. chat. So that's really all. Julie, do you have anything for community engagement? No, I, again, thank you, Matt, for doing that coffee chat. It was in the height of the graduation issues, and so it was very well attended because I think very many people were interested in what he had to say on that particular topic, and I think it helped uh, ease a lot of angst that was in the community around that particular topic. Uh, 
So thank you for taking that on head on. Um, and I think it got a lot of a lot of answers out there quickly um, when those answers needed to be given. So thank you for doing that. Did a good job of answering all the questions as they came in, I think. Yeah. I think that this is one of those ways that if we look at, you know, what this what this has kind of propelled us into, into this virtual world, I think that this is a great opportunity for us to be reflective about how we connect with the community. I mean, even the coffee prior to this one still had over a hundred and something people that were engaged in it. And so I have to believe that this might be a great new way for us to continue engaging with our community. Um, I love the fact at the very end that you scrolled the comments, you read them, the questions that were coming up. I mean, if you could answer them, you did. If you couldn't, you just said, I, I don't have an information now, but I'd love to get back to you. Um, my team will. And so I think that um, I think we just need to keep this on our radar as a possibility into the future. Yeah, and, and maybe it's every other, you know, in person versus virtual. We'll, we'll yeah. figure that out as we plan out next year. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I just think that there's a lot of people that can, you know, be at home, engage in that, but might not be able to make it to a coffee shop. So I think we just need to keep that on the radar. All right, um, Finance Business Advisory Committee. We met today at uh, two o'clock and reviewed with the finance uh, committee via Zoom. Uh, Matt gave an update of where we are currently as well as what we're looking at for the fall. And then we reviewed the draft five-year forecast that we're gonna look at in a few minutes. Um, Linda, Julie, what did I miss? I think there were a lot of good questions raised about uh, what we're predicting for the future or what we can't predict for the future. And it was a it was a good discussion about what the next week looks like, much less the next five years. Yep, and a lot of compliments to Jenny and the team for and all the work that's been done by the district for getting us in the position that we are with the cash on hand to be able to weather the storm and the unpredictability. Um, and this is what happened. And we had been previously talking about stress testing the system and that we certainly are in the middle of a stress test right now uh, with what we're in. So we all certainly never predicted the stress test would be quite as significant as what it is right now. Um, but that we're thankful that we are where we are when we entered the stress test. Yeah. Can you clarify who is on the finance advisory committee, business advisory committee, who makes up that committee? So we have Ken Kime, who represents uh, Westchester Township. We have Pam Quinlisk, who represents Liberty Township. And we have um, Tim Fitzharris, Jim Lalithan. We also have Kevin Carlin, who represents the LEA. I um, think, I think that's it. Did I miss anybody? I think that's it. It's a okay. small but mighty group. There you go. Yeah, I just I, I just know we have finance slash business advisory, so I didn't know if it was one of those things where we're building that out to have more business as a part of that group. I know that we've kind of re-engaged that group after the first year I think I was on the board. Is that the intent? So Matt and I have talked about this. I know that um, there were a few additional before the pandemic hit, I know that um, Matt was looking at a, a few extra people to add to it so one committee could serve as both a superintendent's okay. advisory and the finance committee. Um, but I, you know, that's been our discussion. Matt, anything you want to add there? No, just I think when we get back to normal times, we'll make those additions, but now it's a little bit clunky. Yeah. The other thing, too, I wanted to mention about the meeting was that Tim sent a follow-up to Jenny and I that all four were later tonight. It had some really good points in it. Nothing for the board meeting, but um, just some kudos to Jenny and just some thoughts moving forward. Okay. Great. Um, Butler Tech? Um, I feel like Butler Tech is going through again many of the same things the district is going through with the winding down of school getting everybody to turn in their items. Um, they have started up adult education. 
Um, so they felt that that was important to be able to start up given that so many people are losing their jobs. They wanted people to be able to get out and get their certifications um, in different fields. So if there is anybody who needs to earn credentials in any adult ed fields, the adult ed has begun. Um, for students who weren't able to earn their credentials in something, as soon as they are able, they are going to try to still get those students back into the classroom to get that hands-on learning that they need in order to get their credentialing. Um, so again, they're still working on that, but they've said that those students are welcome back at any time in the future to finish out their learning um, going forward. So they're not gonna kind of hold them to a, a specific date. Um, but as soon as they're able to get those kids back in the classroom so that the kids can earn their credentialing and certifications that they need if they were working on, say, something for welding, something for cosmetology, they weren't able to get their hours in because of the pandemic, they're still going to allow them in even after their graduation date in order to get some particular licensure that they may still need. So. Um, a lot of things going on in those arenas with Butler Tech. So they're working with all the member school districts is my understanding. Matt may be able to speak to that more, um, just keeping them abreast of where they are on all their issues, graduation issues, just like Lakota, closing out the school year issues, getting everybody in to turn in their items as well as pick up their personal belongings. And again, same issues that every member district is also dealing with. Did I did I hear somewhere that uh, career tech was um, protected from the recent round of budget reductions? Yes, that is the news that they did just receive. So thus far, okay. they have been insulated from any of the budget cuts. Okay, which makes sense. I mean, if you think about reengaging the workforce and things like that, I mean, I think it's way more complicated than it says it makes sense. But um, I did hear that, and I think that's important to share as well. Yes, thank you. Okay, any other comments? All right, um, legislative update. Dale, would you like to start? Um, sure. So in terms of the legislative update, it's every day um, we're talking to governor's office or um, some of our local superintendents, including John Graff, and including Chris Brown, uh, when we're trying to build this out. I think what we're looking for is guidance in terms of the logistics when we talk about reopening in the fall. Um, social distancing, what is that gonna look like? Are those answers yet? I think on the educational side of things, we'll be able to do uh, what we need to do with our staff and our administrators and, and teaming with um, other like-minded districts. I just think now we're just waiting on that. Uh, um, every day there are Zoom calls and phone calls with people at the state. Um, there's also a group of superintendents across the country. Where we talk uh, twice a week now about um, reopening. There are some states ahead of us um, in terms of reopening plans like Washington uh, State, for example, that we're sort of seeing how they're doing things. Um, we have time, but we know that we're gonna be either remote or some sort of blended hybrid in the fall. That's what it feels like. I guess we could be traditional, but. Um, that's where we're at now. Um, I have VASA meeting um, tomorrow. The county superintendents talk uh, every Thursday, and your executive team here at Lakota is still talking every day at 3:30. So more more than you probably want to know, but um, just a lot going on, obviously. Jenny, I really don't have. Uh, much more to add than that um, legislatively you know we're watching closely the governor's office and um, information coming out from the ohio um, budget management office um, staying in touch with the so just you know trying to keep up as best as we can and keeping in communication so that you know the things and the flexibility that we need moving forward is definitely being communicated by us to um, those who can make changes for us. Kelly? 
Um, not much really else to add, Linda. You know, I do the OSBA town hall calls every Wednesday to just kind of keep up with what's going on. But most of what's mentioned in those, Matt and has covered and Jenny has covered. So I have uh, just a few things from the OSBA state level. Um, I would say the four biggest issues that we're hearing about from across the state, of Matt, as Matt and Jenny have already said, are the reopening of schools and how everyone's going to handle that in the fall the uh, ways to commemorate graduation. And it sounds like every district is going to be doing something a little bit different and personalized to that district. And discussions around great, how grading is being handled for this uh, last quarter uh, compared to what we've done in the past. One of the, the uh, statistics that came through that really impacted me was to hear that 50.8 million students have been impacted by this virus across the United States. And when you think about that impact on this generation of students, that's tremendous. And I think something we always have to keep in the forefront of our thinking. As Kelly mentioned, there's a town, ongoing town hall forums every week. There's also, uh, tomorrow is the next one, a mental health and social emotional learning uh, seminar and training for board members. And tomorrow's version will be on signs of suicide. And then at the uh, State House, we have two bills that are uh, currently in the hot topic area. Senate Bill 1, which is um, passed the House, expected to pass the Senate, and that would impose uh, legislative approval of any health department orders going past 14 days. And then there's Senate Bill 55, which has also passed the House and waiting Senate concurrence and that's about um, drug offenses that occur near um, addiction recovery services. So those are the two big ones happening at the state level at this point in time. And of course, everyone's listening to the governor's um, updates at two o'clock every day. So our public's probably very informed on legislative issues right now. Any questions for anyone? That's all we have. Okay. Thank you for the update. We appreciate that. Moving on to administrative reports. The first item that we have on the agenda is the first read of the school calendar. Um, Ed is not on board docs. Is that, how are we going to see that? Do we need? I have the same question, Brad. <laughs> Would yeah. love to have a first read. I would love for that. <laughs> okay what happened. You want to pull that off since we can't see it? Sure. Do I need to make a motion to pull it off or can we just skip over it? Jenny, you're I'll muted. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to table that business until the next meeting. Okay. Sorry about Do that. A second. I'll second, okay. Kelly. Great. Jenny, when you have an opportunity, roll call. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. Okay, that moves us on to the second item. It's the draft uh, May 2020 five-year forecast. Okay, I know Adam is going to try and pull up a slideshow here. I just have a few slides kind of go over with you. At the last board meeting, we talked through um, some assumptions that we thought we might want to incorporate into this forecast. So we're going to talk through those again. And we know more now than what we did during the last meeting. And I'm sure we'll know, well, maybe we'll know a little bit more before the next board meeting, but this is as of what we know now. So Adam, you wanna to go to the next slide? Maybe. Technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, so revenue assumptions. With real estate taxes, and that's our biggest revenue that we have as a district, we are currently going through a reappraisal in Butler County. And that will impact our collection 
that we receive in calendar year 2021. We're estimating a 5% increase, which I mentioned at the last board meeting. Um, we also know that there could be a delay on how that gets implemented, but that's at the state level. So when we know more about that, we will, we will let you know. We have reduced our new construction estimates. We went back and took a look at what kind of new construction were we seeing during the Great um, Recession, and we have tried to back down our new construction estimates. We haven't taken them out altogether. We've just um, backed down those increases there that we're estimating moving forward. We've also included a delinquency rate of 3% beginning next year. Right now, our collection rate is right at 100%. So we're including a 3% um, moving into next year. We also don't know about the, um, the scheduling of when payments are going to be. If deadlines are extended on when you can make payments, that could influence, impact our cash flow. When we look at state funding, we all heard that the governor announced the cuts to um, the state budget last week and for Lakota that means 3.4 million dollars will be reduced cut from our foundation payments for May and June. There are three payments left for the rest of this year and so that 3.4 million is being deducted from that money that is due us. We're also forecasting a 10% reduction next year. Moving forward from FY21 into 22, we're gonna keep that flat, that 10% we're keeping flat for FY22. In 23 and 24, we're bringing back those reductions so that basically at the end of this forecast, the amount that we're predicting we would have in state revenue looks like what we got in FY19 last year. We're also receiving CARES funding from the federal government of 1.3 million. That's also included in the forecast, but you can see that it's wonderful to have the CARES money but it does not fill the hole from the first budget cut that we've received from the state. We also know that the casino revenue has drastically uh, been impacted from this as well. So when we take a look at our revenues, looking at next year, that's $10 million less in fiscal year 21 that we will be predicting. Next slide, Adam. For expenditures, we have a negotiated agreement with both of our, our um, unions, LEA and LSSA, through next year, fiscal year 21. Beyond that, we had predicted a 3% increase in wages in the five-year forecast in November. We have backed out any increase in the forecast beyond FY21 because we believe that it's so unpredictable right now with um, unemployment and double digits already, people losing jobs, um, having their wages cut. We did not feel like there's enough information to even try to predict what that would look like. So there are no increases included in the forecast at this time. Healthcare, we have not made changes on what we've predicted since November, but as we move forward and we know more about this um, pandemic and its impact on our healthcare system, we'll make adjustments at that time. We just don't know what that might look like right now. Purchase services, just to remind everyone that as we look at that purchase service as line item and it's increasing next year, it's because freshman transportation is included in there. It's not something new we've added in, but it is included in there. Also supplies and equipment. We have 
begun that tightening of our belt by reducing our building budgets by 20%. So that's included that cut as well as um, wanted to mention when you look at capital outlay, you're going to see some increase for this year and next year. And that's because we're having to replace both turfs at the high schools for safety uh, reasons. So you're going to see some increases there, but then it will come back down. Next slide. So we can look at the five-year forecast document and we'll look at that, but that's a lot of numbers to sort through. This is just a snapshot of those main line items on the five-year forecast to, and to look at it from what did November look like versus what does the draft look like so far. And so you're going to see, of course, you know, everybody's going to look at the red because it shows up. Um, you know, it's, it's that first thing that, that grabs your eye there, but based on the information that I've just gone over those, um, those predictions that we're making, those assumptions that we're making at this time, a spending deficit would be included next year. When you take 10 million out of revenues, you're going to see that happen. It, it's what happens. Um, as well as when you take a look from 2022 through 2024, remember I said that, you know, we're not, we're not including any type of a prediction on what increases in wages would be. So in November, we had 3% in, this one is showing zero. So that's going to also impact those expenditure line items. Next slide. So in summary, this is unfolding. We keep saying that every day, sometimes every hour, we're hearing um, new information or differing information. Uh, we have adjusted based on the information we have now. Um, we do have cash in our um, general fund. We have a rainy day fund that we set up. We changed policy, we added policy, and we started funding that rainy day fund last year, which, you know, to the board's credit, that was a wonderful policy that you added. And I think it's, it is something now that as we enter into this unprecedented time with finances included, you have that rainy day fund set up. So for the, for the time being right now, we are, we have cash, we have reserves to sustain us. How long this lasts and how deep these next cuts are, that's gonna, those are the big questions to help us figure out what do we do to sustain us for the long term. Short term, we are one of the lucky ones and I don't know that luck is the exact right word to say. There was a lot of work that went into getting the district where it is right now. Um, and this board had to make some difficult decisions years ago, but you know, and you know, Matt under his leadership, we put a, a lot of great things in and our education system and Lakota is in a great place right now. Um, how this will go into the future, nobody knows, um, but I'm trying to look for the silver lining and there is some silver lining. We are in a much better place than what we were as we entered the, the impact of the great uh, recession, much better place. And um, we will keep adjusting, we will keep planning and um, do what we have to do to sustain ourselves for the long term. Questions? I'm just looking at this relative to the forecast that was done a year ago. And if you look at the 2023, because it went out a year less, I mean, it's amazing the swing just from the revenue side. Our expenditures in this forecast are less than what they would have been in 2023. Um, but the cash balance swings from 
118 million in that forecast to 86 million in this forecast, just from the changes in the revenue side. So, I mean, it's definitely a big hit that's being taken. Um, but again, we're thankful to have those reserves that we have. And Kelly and Linda mentioned those OSBA calls. There was one, I believe last week's call um, was talking about the forecasts and how much lack of predictability there is right now and talking about focusing on what you can know and do know and not spending too much time on what you can't control and what you don't know in those outer years. So I think with what you've done, you've done an excellent job of that because there just is so much uncertainty in this forecast yeah. that you just can't control and can't know. We can't. We try to make the, the best assumptions that we can um, based on the information that we have, but trying to predict into the future is always difficult. And right now, it's very, very difficult. I also think, Julie, even based on the unpredictability, which as you said, no one predicts a pandemic to happen. Uh, it's stunning to all of us. But it also is a perfect example of why we need to be conservative in our thinking and in our planning process because there is the unknown. And I think it's just brought home to all of us that that's exactly the case. And the fact that we have that reserve and can fall back on this puts us in a much different place than many other organizations, many other school districts, many other local governments across the state and across the nation that are dealing with this. And I am thankful that there has been a conservative approach and want to again caution our board to remember that in the future. The unpredictability is predictable. That's all I had uh, for tonight. The five-year forecast document is out there on board docs. I also emailed it to you. Uh, if you have questions, comments, suggestions, what have you, please reach out to me at the next board meeting. We will have the five-year forecast on the agenda for adoption so that we can file it by the end of this month. Thanks, okay. Jenny. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jenny. You. And, and I'll just echo before we move on, you know, thankful for boards in the past. I was not part of that, but thankful for um, the hard work that was done to get us to a different point. Um, from where we're in the Great Recession to this point and the fact that, you know, it's obviously a revenue issue at this point, but knowing that we've got that rainy day fund and the general fund to lean back on. But I, you know, I think we also have to just realize and I, I, I the five year forecast represents this. It's not necessarily rainy day we're in, we're in a rainy season right now. And so uh, we're going to have to just kind of keep our noses down and take a look at what's going on as a board. Um, and have clear communication with Jenny. So make sure you get her the questions and things like that as we head into the next meeting um, so we can keep these conversations going. All right, um, moving on to the next item on the agenda, which is new business. We have the resolution that we spoke about at the past last meeting, um, which is the resolution for continued operations of schools during um, the executive order for COVID. Um, I don't know if did everybody have an opportunity to open that and take a look at it prior to the meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the resolution? So I'll move. move. Well, so Kelly can move. I will second. This is Julie. Great. Uh, board discussion? I would like to move to strike section eight, part A, and that would be the particular piece around suspending public participation. As I've said in the past several uh, board meetings, I really think before all this started, I really think that it's important and critical for our public to be, have an opportunity to talk to us at these regular board meetings. And I know it looks a little different when we're looking at it on a Zoom meeting as opposed to an in-person meeting, but I still think it's very important to demonstrate that the board recognizes the importance of public participation. So I am making a motion to strike that particular piece of this resolution before we pass it. Again, that was section eight, part A. Uh, Just go for it, sorry. 
Uh, does that s say that, I'm sorry, I don't have it pulled up now. I did read that we're gonna suspend can, it all together or I thought it was just that it was gonna like look me to, would you like me to read section eight really quick? Sure. It, okay. In order to prevent against the further spread of novel coronavirus, the Board of Education hereby temporarily suspends a public participation policy for board and committee meetings, which shall no longer be in effect upon adoption of this resolution by the majority of the Board of Education. Such policy may be reinstated through a subsequent action taken by the Board of Education or after the current state of the emergency is lifted. I think um, that's my interpretation. I interpreted that to mean we just weren't meeting having public comment in person, that we were still doing what we, what we had been doing. So I guess I misunderstood what that was. So when we met with the attorneys and talked to them and they drafted this, um, this, this originally came from OSBA saying you should um, take some type of action because you are not going to be able to follow your policy as it relates to public comment verbatim for board meetings. So this is not saying you are suspending public comment, but you are suspending that policy as it relates to public comment because you cannot do, you don't want to violate your policy. So you can still do public comment, but you're suspending the policy until you get back in purple in person and things get back to normal. That's how I understood it, that we were just suspending that particular in-person public comment and not that we're not taking public comment. Actually, I was the one who brought this forward, Jenny, because it had come out in an OSBA That's conversation. Right. And it was, right at, it was right at the start of all of this when we weren't even sure how we were going to be conducting meetings. And I just want to be sure that as we're looking at this, to me, I don't want anything to come across to our community that says we don't welcome their participation. And so I would like to strike that piece to make it clear that the board still considers the public input to be just as important in these meetings as in our regular meetings. But then we'll be violating our policy. On we'll be, public yeah. That's how I read too. We'll be violating the policy because we're not having public comments the way that we usually do. We're still allowing public participation. So I don't think we are violating our policy. As long as within these virtual meetings, we're allowing an opportunity for that. We aren't violating our policy. Jenny, what does legal say about that? Legal drafted the resolution and put this put those words in. So I can't, I'm not an attorney and I can't speak on behalf of our attorneys, but the attorneys drafted this and it came from um, the information like Linda mentioned through the OSBA uh, course. So this is their recommendation. These are, these are the attorney's words, not ours. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to strike section or section eight item A on resolution, um, do I have a second? Does the motion go down without a second? Yes. Okay, so may motion- I ask for it, I, May I ask for a brand to be separated out from the rest of the resolution to be voted on separately? Sure. Yes. Uh, okay. So, Jenny, do I make a motion to separate the item and then is that how I need to go about it? Yes. If Linda would like, if, if she's requesting that in the form of a motion, is that what you're doing? Okay. I am. Okay. okay. So you need we have a a to vote on that separately. Okay. We have, we have a motion to separate section eight, item A, um, into a new item. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Jenny? Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Casper? <laughs> yes, I think. This is just to separate the motion, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. Okay, so we have two motion or we have two resolution. Well, we have one resolution and we had a motion to separate one part. So we'll go ahead and do I have a motion? 
Okay, uh, should I vote? <laughs> should I make a motion, the... Brad, to accept the res, or actually you already have that motion on the floor, so it's a vote on that. Okay, um, so we just need to make a, have, Jenny, Hang call on. roll. Hang on, I have Kelly and Julie, who motioned and seconded okay. to approve the resolution, correct? correct? Okay, so the resolution that you will be voting on will be minus section eight, part A. Okay. Okay. Jenny, call roll. Okay. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. Okay. Now we need to vote on. Well, you you really here we go with the. We should have done the second. We should have done the second one first, right? Well, the, her motion that was approved just said that you will vote on it separately. It wasn't to approve it. So now you need right. a motion to approve. Section eight, part A. Okay. We're, so this vote is to approve section eight, part A. Correct. All right, Jenny, please call roll. Can, can, no discussion on this? You need a motion and a second to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I, do I have a motion to approve section eight, item A? So moved. We have a second for. Do we? No second. So the motion, motion falls. Correct. Which means your resolution was adopted without this the part about public comment. So. I'm confused, I have to say. So no, nobody seconded the uh, motion for A. Correct. Let me go back and tell you exactly what has happened. First of all, uh, Linda moved, and there was no second to um, take out, delete Section 8 Part A. That died for lack of a second. Then and you already had the motion to approve the resolution. Then she moved to vote on them separately. That passed. Then you voted on approving the, the resolution minus section eight part A, that approved. Then there was a motion to, by Julie, to approve section eight part A. That's the part that you still need a second on, and I'm not, I didn't hear a second, Brad, correct? Correct. I'll second that, because I need to have a discussion. <laughs> or is it too late? <laughs> Do we need a new motion? No, I mean, with the confusion, especially with, we're, as we're going through Zoom, <laughs> I think, I think if she wants to second it and have a, a discussion now, I, you're the chair. Okay. But I would recommend it's okay right. in light of the confusion. All right, great. So we have a second um, discussion. Okay, so somebody help me understand, Jenny, legally, if the lawyer said to put it in there, what are we doing to ourselves to legally leave it out? Again, I'm not an attorney, but if you do something in the virtual arena where someone would believe that you're violating your policy um, that's where you could be in trouble so kelly i would interpret it as it requires us even in our virtual meetings to allow for public participation to the best of our ability in order to honor the policy Whereas I interpret it as we have to follow the exact letter of our current policy. And if we don't, then we're in violation of our policy. So for me, I would like to pass it because I feel like 
I still am committed to public participation, but I'm concerned if we don't pass it, then we would potentially be violating our policy and that could get us into trouble for a violation. Which is what I, uh, that's what I thought I understood being on that when they brought it up on the o in the OSBA town hall, that is how I interpreted it. So I don't think we're not trying to do public comments, correct? We obviously are doing public comments through the virtual meetings. I believe it holds us to a stricter standard if we're saying we're not suspending the policy. I, I didn't hear, I can't hear you, Linda, I'm sorry. I believe it holds us to a stricter standard of trying to honor that policy if we don't pass this resolution. So my goal and my intent would be to make sure that we do our best regardless of the circumstances to allow for public participation in all of our meetings. I think we all have the same intent. It's just a matter of how we get there and what our opinion is on the legality of honoring that commitment. The, the fact is that we, we cannot honor the policy that as it is written in a virtual format. Correct, which is why the, the recommendation is to suspend it. That's right. Okay, that's how I understand it as well. Okay, any, any further discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, Jenny, would you like to please call roll? Can you please remind me before you call the roll that we're voting to suspend our policy, correct? Yes. Okay, this thank you. Section eight, part A of the resolution. Okay. This is Schaefer? Yes. This is Casper? Yes. Mrs. O'Connor? No. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. Okay. Um, there's no additional business on that one, is there, Jenny? No. Nope. Okay. Just, just, want, just want to double check. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was, that was fun. All right, moving on to the next session or section, which is treasurer's recommendations. We have um, three items, uh, approval board member, mem mem minutes, not members, uh, approve of monthly board reports and the approve of the invoice for payment. Do I have a motion to approve items A through C? So moved, Julie. Todd will second. Okay, discussion. Hearing no discussion, Jenny, would you please call roll? Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. Moving on to the next item on the agenda, it's superintendent's recommendations. We have four recommendations. The approve the personnel items, approve a resolution to suspend supplemental contracts, Approve a resolution authorizing the 2021 membership to the OHSAA and also to approve donations. Do I have a motion to approve items A through D? So moved. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All right, hearing no discussion, Jenny, would you please call roll? Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mr. Lovell? Yes. This brings us to the second public comment section of the evening. This is for um, any public comments that people would like to share with us. Just a reminder, um, a three minute limit. Um, there are no, uh, I don't believe there were any emails that were sent to us prior to four. Is there anybody that's attending the Zoom that would like to raise their hand and participate in public comment? Okay, I not. Brad, yes. I see somebody submitted a typed in question that asked if this was recorded. I wasn't able to join until late. And so under the question and answers. I just responded to both. They were just uh, a, a brand new family moving into the district and went to know if this was recorded. They couldn't okay. come in until late. So I just said, yes, we'll get it up as soon as possible and welcome to Lakota. Okay, thank you, Great. Matt. Thank, thank sure. you. 
All right, hearing and seeing and not receiving any information for public comment, we'll move on to uh, board closing comments. We'll start uh, with uh, Mrs. O'Connor. I uh, wanted to mention the military ceremony, the military commitment ceremony that we saw the other evening on Thursday. That was a very nice event. I'm so glad that we went ahead and honored that and honored those students uh, in spite of the fact that it was virtual. I thought our speaker did a great job. I'm not sure how our uh, singers coordinated that piece of bringing it all together from their individual homes. It was amazing to listen to and just really appreciated that moment and uh, look forward to graduation being the same kind of very special moment for our students and our families. So thank you for the extra work that that's entailed. Great, Mr. Parnell. I have no other comments. Okay, Ms. Schaefer. Um, I also saw, again, trying to get all the traditions in in a different and new way. We, they've, we've started the Parade of Graduates and I saw Adina did theirs and um, did a very nice job. Um, thank you to our communications department for their work in trying to honor all of the great traditions um, that we've done over the years in a very different way. So um, just continued kudos to all the staff for finding different and unique ways to honor everyone. I know it's not what everyone hoped for closing out the year, but appreciate all the hard work to make everything as much as it can be. Great, thank you. Ms. Casper? Um, nothing really quick, just echoing the, what Linda said about the military commitment ceremony. It was a really nice ceremony and I'm glad we also did it. And again, what Julie said, a special shout out to Betsy and Lauren and Cindy. The communication team has been working double, triple overtime during this pandemic to keep our families informed of everything that's going on, as well as to honor our students. So thank you to them. Yes, Ms. Logan. Nothing else for me tonight. All right, Mr. Miller. Uh, just a quick echo to all the comments that the rest of the board members have said, and then I'll throw also um, just the staff as we try to put some closure onto this year that they've been uh, real troopers through it all, and also a shout out to the executive team who are doing so many things behind the scenes, almost it feels like 24-7, so thanks to them as well. Great, thank you. The only thing I'd like to add is that this is the time of the year, is the year that we would uh, be honoring the retirees across the district. Um, I'm not sure how many total retirees we have this year, but to all of those that are retiring, I just wanted to say, and I'm sure the board all feels the same sentiment, uh, thank you for your years of service to Lakota. You're appreciated and we're sad that we aren't able to honor you um, in a way that's fitting for your dedication and the service that you've had um, for the district, but know that um, we're thankful for you and we're proud of you and uh, we wish you the best in uh, everything that you have in the future. Great. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Linda. Second, Julie. Great. Jenny, will you please call roll? Mrs. O'Connor? Yes. Mrs. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Casper? Yes. Mr. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Level? Yes. Thank you, thank you everybody for joining us and we will see you at our next meeting. And I don't have the date in front of me. Anybody, <laughs> I feel like I should have a date or say something, I think it's but I don't have it. I believe it's May a, no, that can't be right. Maybe. May 26th. 26. Okay, May 26th. All right, thank you. All right, have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.